Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Newsroom. I'm your host, Rumah Khalid Bhatt. Today is the 10th of May 2022. These are the stories that we'll be talking about during the course of the show. We'll begin with the crisis in Sri Lanka. And as we know, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka has resigned. But at the same time, Sri Lanka has given emergency powers to the military and police after clashes in the country has killed seven people. A lot of people are protesting against the crisis, the economic crisis that has engulfed the country. The country is in an extreme uh, condition, in fact, the worst condition since it gained independence in 1948. This is going to be our first segment. Our second story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns Afghanistan and the current economic turmoil and humanitarian turmoil that the country is engulfed with. Despite the harsh decisions taken by the Afghan Taliban regime, nearly half of Afghanistan's population is facing acute hunger. This is as per a United Nations report that has been published yesterday. What needs to be done and how can Afghanistan move forward in order to cater to the needs of the people that are under such uh, acute depression and humanitarian crisis? This is going to be our second story. Our third story concerns uh, Israel Prime Minister uh, Naftali Bennett statements rejecting uh, outside interference in the management of the Al-Aqsa Mosque and this has uh, sparked uh, a lot of outcry from the Jordanians as well as the Palestinians and this is seen as a denial of the 1994 Jordanian-Israeli peace treaty that had given Jordan a role in managing and supervising the Islamic and Christian sanctities in Jerusalem. The crisis deepens and the final story concerns the strain, the substrain of Omicron that has uh, again is, uh, come out uh, in Pakistan. We've got one case that has been confirmed by the National Institute of Health yesterday and now uh, Premier Shahbaz Sharif has ordered for the reopening of the NCOC and the restoration of the organization after Pakistan reported the first case of BA 2.1 2.1. This is going to be our last story. Let's begin with our first segment and that concerns the economic turmoil in Sri Lanka and of course the political turmoil that is associated with it now that the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka has uh, resigned and emergency powers have been given by the military and the police after the clashes have killed seven people. More in the following report. Sri Lanka is suffering its most painful economic downturn since independence with months of lengthy blackouts and acute shortages of food, fuel and other essentials. Amid escalating protests, demonstrators tempted to storm the national parliament to demand that Rajapaksa resign amid a general strike that shut shops and halted public transport, bringing the nation of 22 million people to a standstill after weeks of unrest. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has resigned and according to statement issued by his office, he was quitting in order to help form an interim unity government. Angry mobs have stormed the house and properties of Rajapaksa loyalists across the country, despite a state of emergency and police curfew. Nearly 150 people were wounded after supporters of the government armed with sticks and clubs attacked peaceful protesters. Meanwhile, trade unions began a week of protest demanding the government change and the president to step down. The Indian Ocean Island nation is on the brink of bankruptcy and has suspended payments on its foreign loans. It defaulted on its foreign debt of $51 billion last month. Shortages of hard currency have also hindered imports of raw materials from manufacturing and worsened inflation, which surged to 18.7% in March. Dr. W. A. Vijayawardene, who is a former uh, Deputy Governor of the Central Bank Sri Lanka and a columnist at the Daily FT, joins us online. Dr. Sab, thank you very much to have joined us. Uh, now that the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka has resigned, but uh, the government has given additional powers to the military and police, we see the riots that are happening in Sri Lanka, we see the clashes, we see the dead uh, citizens of Sri Lanka. Uh, how can Sri Lanka curtail the current crisis? that it is engulfed in, whether it be on the political front and the economic front. What's your take on that, sir? Well, of course, well, of course the Prime Minister has resigned, but uh, our political and economic crisis has not ended as a result of its resignation. There had been lots of violence uh, in the country yesterday. The violence is now uh, receding and uh, we are actually coming back to normalcy in Sri Lanka. Uh, there is a necessity for the uh, president to have a new government uh, form, but unfortunately the opposition is not agreeable with the president's uh, suggestion uh, that they should, they should join the new government. So as a result, 
what is uh, happening in Sri Lanka today is there is no government in Sri Lanka, number one. Number two, the administration machinery is also not functioning because when the prime minister resigns in terms of the constitution, the cabinet stands dissolved. And when the cabinet is dissolved, the, all the secretaries of ministries also cease to hold office. So as a result, there is no functioning government in Sri Lanka. And uh, it is actually uh, hampering the uh, current negotiations with the International Monetary Fund, mainly because there is no Minister of Finance, there is no Secretary to Ministry of Finance, only the central bank governor is remaining in office. So, but he hasn't got any mandate from the new government to negotiate with the IMF. So, as a result, uh, have placed, I think, several steps backward in the economic recovery rather than in moving forward. Dr. Saab, can the government in Sri Lanka afford the current political turmoil that it is in, as you very well explained, that there is no government? Shouldn't there be a very immediate step taken by the president of Sri Lanka to install some kind of governance or apparatus that can move ahead with the talks with the IMF? Yes, that is the most urgent necessity today for the president to uh, establish a new government under his uh, leadership. And if he fails to do that or if he postpones doing it, we are actually moving backward in our economy because as you had very well explained in your uh, preamble to this presentation, uh, we are uh, facing with severe economic crisis, not only the debt that uh, we have, you know, uh, defaulted, uh, we cannot uh, import the import necessities for Sri Lankan people like fuel, uh, cooking gas, medicines, foods, and inputs for uh, raw materials and raw materials for industries. And all these things have been hampered because we don't have uh, foreign exchange reserves in Sri Lanka today. According to the Minister of Finance, who made a statement in Parliament, the usable foreign exchange reserves have fallen to uh, less than 50 million US dollars, but he had actually underestimated the actual situation. In fact, in the case of Sri Lanka, the foreign exchange situation is negative to the extent of 4.4 billion US dollars because the central bank has indebted uh, to, uh, to the extent of 6 billion US dollars. So as a result, uh, we are actually in a grave economic crisis. So the longer the president postpones the uh, establishment of a new government, the greater the problem that we are facing in Sri Lanka today. Dr. Vichay Vardhane, also, uh, can the friendly countries of Sri Lanka, countries that have already pledged to help the, the countries such as China, such as India and others, can they now move in on a rapid pace uh, now that there is a crisis and no government in Sri Lanka? Do you feel these countries will be able to help until such time that a government is put, in, is put into place in Sri Lanka? Yeah, but of course there is already the committed uh, support from India and China. India has agreed to provide trade credit to the extent of 1.5 billion US dollars, of which a uh, substantial amount has already been used to import fuel. China has agreed to provide the soft facility to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, amount to 10 billion yuan, and that is also being drawn up by the Central Bank. But the uh, new type of you know commitments coming from these countries, uh, we will have to have a stable government in place. Uh, without a stable government in place, we cannot go to IMF, nor can we get any support from the Western countries like EU, uh, United States, Canada, and UK, and also Japan. So as a result, uh, the most urgent necessity in Sri Lanka today with respect to economic recovery and also to provide relief to the people we must have a stable government in place. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Vijayavadhanay, to have joined us. You have talked to us about the latest situation emanating from Sri Lanka. We'll go to a short break and then we'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. You're watching Newsroom, and now we're going to talk about the Omicron subvariant BA 2.12.1, whose first case has officially been detected and announced by the National Institute of Health yesterday. Now, as a result, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has uh, ordered the National Command and Operation Center, otherwise known as the NCOC, to be immediately restored so that the proper uh, uh, issues could be taken care of as far as uh, COVID-19 and uh, its management is concerned, as the NCOC has said that, uh, as has done that in the past as well. Dr. Zaim Zia, who's a DHO Islamabad, joins us online. Uh, Dr. Zaim, thank you very much to have joined us. Dr. Zaim, uh, how important is uh, the reopening or, uh, uh, the, I mean, uh, the importance of the NCOC as far as this new variant, the sub-variant of Omicron is concerned. Do you feel that this is the need of the day for the NCOC to be operational again? Well, if you look at, thank you very much for calling me in, and I think uh, um, uh, the way PTV has uh, encouraged the entire um, COVID situations and information spread has been uh, uh, amazing, and uh, along with other, other channels as well. Um, as we, we have seen how COVID had uh, started and how the decisions were made in the right time. And of course, it was NCOC that had been on, on the forefront to make all the decisions for the country. And I think it is very important. And for, for the healthcare uh, workers out there, I would want to, uh, you know, um, uh, tell them that the, the, the new way it has been, you know, they're there. We have to gear up. We have to make sure that uh, we are taking the necessary measures for people and also to the people that you should all uh, get vaccinated, uh, uh, follow all the procedures and SOPs so that you remain safe. All right, Dr. Zainzia, also, uh, this new uh, sub-variant of Omicron, is it as potent as the previous uh, variant? Should we be afraid? Uh, or are the symptoms not as virulent as uh, the previous uh, variant's symptoms were? Well, if, if you look at the, the, the spike it, uh, currently in other countries, it seems like there has been a rise in hospitalizations as well as infections. So it seems it has its own uh, virulence. And uh, to, the, the worrying part is it is more infectious or its transmission is more uh, faster than, uh, than the Omicron variant itself, So, which is why uh, we are keeping a close check on the, on the, on the, on the percentages uh, specifically in Islamabad, because I we look after Islamabad. And um, I think uh, uh, all the other ministries would definitely look into the matter and will uh, act accordingly as they have done in the past. Uh, but to, to, to inform people about this variant, it is, it is more, uh, you know, it, has, uh, more, it will spread more in limited time, as we have seen globally. All right, now, Dr. Zaimzia, a lot of people have had their vaccines taken, but a couple of months back. The boosters have also been taken, myself included, uh, 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 in December 2021. Are, is my body or, or are the other people who have already taken their booster shots and their vaccinations, can uh, their body still uh, perform ably against this new variant? Well, yes, uh, all the variants, if you see it, it's the same virus and uh, the uh, variants resp have responded in the past as well. The reason why we have the least uh, infection, infection rates uh, in the entire country is because of the vaccination uptake. And I think in the coming days, if you have been vaccinated six months ago, we, we recommend uh, that you should get, uh, get the boosters and those who have gotten their vaccination completed should get the boosters and the, those who have to, uh, gotten their boosters should get uh, the additional booster uh, as soon as possible because the, we see that as it is it, it's growing in the entire uh, uh, different countries, as, uh, if we see the trend, uh, we, we do see that this might impact the entire country as well. So we have to be ready, we have to be prepared both from the government and from people. The government is taking its, its, uh, its um, uh, you know, necessary steps, but people need to also uh, help uh, the government to you know follow so please and get vaccinated uh, willingly and also dr zaim zia now that the ncoc is going to be made uh, operational again uh, the importance of the ncoc we've seen has been paramount in the past as well uh, your role has also been extremely important as far as uh, helping the people of islamabad and of course being there for everybody as far as the vaccination process and the sops are concerned do you feel that there's going to be a new mechanism uh, that will be announced 
by the government or by yourself or by the NCOC as far as how to take your vaccinations, where to go, uh, what is, uh, what, uh, how to apply for it as we used to do with the text messaging and all? Well, if you see there's a hierarchy that NCOC and the Ministry of National Health Services have been there to provide all the guidance to, to the departments and the ministries. So we, we've been working under the direct supervision of those NCC and the Ministry of National Health Services. So all the technical, uh, you know, uh, officials in, in, in the NCOC and Ministry of National Health Services, uh, you know, create all those guidelines that we implement on the ground. And I think uh, if you if we if we see how things have unfolded over last two years, uh, we definitely look. Uh, we will see that it will definitely help us. Dr. Zaim, how important is the following of the SOPs now that we have detected the first case? Well, it's very important. It's always been very important. And I think uh, uh, the, 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 it's, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, following SOPs has been uh, very important um, because the spread needs to be stopped. And the, the only way that you can stop the spread is by, you know, dis social distancing, wearing a mask um, and also uh, getting vaccinated. All right. And finally, do you feel that uh, the country can move together as one in order to curtail the further spread of the virus? And how much do you see this virus spreading now that the first case has officially been announced? There might be other cases that we don't know about. Well, uh, I think uh, they should, uh, the NIH will uh, respond to, to the question. But All right. since, since uh, you know, we have, we have the new variant uh, diagnosed, um, things are, if you see uh, currently... Uh, the, the percentages are still down and we are keeping a close check in order to ensure that there is no new spike coming up again. So we'll, oh. we'll make sure in Islamabad that we do as we did in the past and also ensure that people get vaccinated, people get tested, people uh, get facilitated uh, on the directives or, or as per the SOPs announced by the NCOC and Ministry of Health Services. Thank you very much, Dr. Zahim Zia, to have joined us. Uh, that was DHO Islamabad. Dr. Zahim Zia talking to us about the new sub-variant of the Omicron, that is the BA 2.1-2.1, whose first case was detected by yesterday by the NIH, officially declared by the NIH. And now our Premier uh, Shabash Sharif Sahib has also said that uh, the NCOC is going to be made operational. Again, finally, let's uh, come towards the situation in Israel. And uh, the Jordanian uh, uh, MP says that occupying power practices terrorism and criminality against the defenseless Palestinians people. Jordanian Okaf, he says, should be strengthened, enlarged and empowered. Now, the fact remains that Israeli Prime Minister uh, Naftali Bennett's statement uh, that comes out and as he rejects the outside interference in the management of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, on Sunday there are uh, protests that uh, are sparked as a result of that amongst Jordanians as well as Palestinians because there was a deal that was made, an agreement that was made in 1994 between Israel and Jordan. Uh, that was a peace treaty between the two countries and they gave Jordan a role in managing and supervising Islamic and Christian sanctities in Jerusalem, something that now is being denied by the current Israeli Prime Minister. This is going to lead towards a more uh, uh, an, uh, anarchy like situation as far as uh, already Palestine is concerned. We are seeing the way uh, the Israelis are moving forward as far as evicting the Palestinians are concerned. Uh, we are seeing reports, we have talked about the, uh, the thousands of people that are being taken out of their homes and the number of troops that are being used per home in order to remove the Palestinians from uh, their premises. We also remember what happened in Al-Aqsa Mosque. We also remember uh, what happened in, in May uh, last year. Uh, nevertheless, the, the authorities in Israel continue uh, their barbarism as far as the Palestinian people are concerned. And now this uh, has gone beyond Palestine. This has gone beyond Israel because Jordan has also now uh, shown its complete uh, uh, interference of Israel as something that it should not have done as far as this peace deal between Jordan and Israel is concerned. And it says that uh, Israel needs to uh, be uh, aware of the repercussions of uh, this uh, 1994 Jordanian-Israeli peace treaty that gave Jordan the, the, the right to manage and supervise Islamic and Christian sanctities in, Jeru in Jerusalem. Now, Jordanian MP Mohammed al-Zahori has called Israel a colonial occupying power that practices terrorism and criminality against Palestinian people and which lacks religious, historical or legal legitimacy 
in Jerusalem. The Palestinian committee has also reiterated J Jordan's rejection of the temporal and spatial division of Al-Aqsa and has stressed Jerusalem will remain the capital of Palestine. The Jordanian Israeli officials had agreed to meet in the past after Ramzan to discuss arrangements around the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but the Islamic or CAF in Jerusalem has said that no structures have taken place regarding such meetings. If a peace deal between Jordan and Israel is not respected the way it needs to be respected, this is going to create a further uh, uh, situa alarming situation in the region. We already are seeing the situation emanate, escalate uh, since the last one year as far as uh, Palestine is concerned. And it is extremely important uh, in this current times where we see a lot of uh, unsettling situations around the world, whether it be uh, Ukraine, whether it be Palestine, whether it be in an illegal occupied Jammu and Kashmir, that the, whether it be the United Nations or the West, uh, the important countries that matter need to resolve these crises before they escalate further into one situation that uh, will no longer be able to be handled by even the big countries. Now, uh, uh, let me just give you a little part of uh, the uh, different points that were agreed as far as the peace deal between Jordan and Israel is concerned. There were three important points. The first, Jordan will retain its unique role in the Al-Aqsa Mosque complex. The second, each party will provide access to places of religious and uh, historical interest. And third, the two parties uh, will work together to strengthen relations between the three monotheistic religions to work for religious understanding, moral commitment, freedom of worship, tolerance, and peace. Now, uh, Palestinians are also uh, asking the Israelis to remove a model of a temple which is located at the entrance of the Mughrabi Gate through which the Jewish settlers enter the compound. At the same time, uh, the uh, statements by the Israeli uh, Prime Minister uh, Naftali Bennett come uh, in a very tense situation in the region. It's extremely important that the necessary be done in order to thwart this escalation that is plaguing the Middle East and other areas across the world as well. We can only talk about uh, these things, but it's important to take action on these important matters before it's way too late. With that, we come to an end of today's newsroom. We'll see you inshallah tomorrow with new story segments that pertain to you, us, and Pakistan. In the meantime, stay safe and follow the SOPs as we've just discussed. Allah Hafiz.